Hi, everybody. What is it? Wednesday evening? I just finished up an evangelicalish podcast. And now I'm jumping into a live. My hair is a freaking mess. But oh well. I'll live with that. Jeez, it's all over the place. I look like a nutty professor, but we'll go with it. So how's everybody tonight? My live topic tonight is what was your deconstructing moment? Would love to hear from you guys in the comments on TikTok or YouTube. What caused you to begin deconstructing your faith? What what was was it a topic? Was it an interaction with a person? And as you're joining and thinking about that, just tell me where you're joining from. We always join around place. And we start with, I have the incense burning. And uh, we just start with knowing that this is a beautiful thing, that we get to be together and and be one together and, and share this moment as, as spiritual beings together. Jeez, I'm really hating my hair tonight. but And... So glad you're here. So not new ones, Peggy, just just the usual. So let me know where you're here, where you're joining from, what your name is. I'm sorry, I'm seeing somebody's pulling into my driveway. South Bend, Indiana, love the earrings, and they refuse to learn, says M.A. James. You know what? I need to, I need to prop up my TikTok camera just a little bit higher. So hang on, everybody, while I do a little technical work here. And that, okay, so now we've got that camera in the way. And I've got to figure that out. So we're going to have to move this over just a little bit like that, and it works. How about that? Okay. So sending lots of love. Casper from Ohio is with us. Uh, Renee says, Jesus Christ. I don't know why she's saying Jesus Christ. Chuck, my friend from central Washington is here. Facebook user from Maryland. Like you have to give permission for StreamYard to use your name. So I just have Facebook user from Maryland. So glad you guys are with me. EJK from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Nice. Let me see. I'm trying to decide if I like these earrings or if I want to just go with something just gold or something like that. What do you think? <laughs> His name is not Jesus Christ. It's Pastor Paul. Hey, Pastor Paul, just a quick question. What denomination organization were you a part of? Um, so I was ordained in the Vineyard Association of Churches and ultimately planted a non-denominational church that was uh, you know, closely aligned with Bethel Church out of Reading, and I have many friends from that church. Karen says, no, love the color. Okay, so keep these on. You like those better than something like this. If I did that, I do kind of like the color. All right, so let's stick with the color. All right, cool. Thank you for that input. We'll do that. Let me put that back. Yeah, I do kind of like the blue. It kind of works. Um, oh, Peggy says, yes, change them. Well, I can't I can't make everybody happy. Are you seriously a pastor? Yes, I am. I am ordained and have been for years and years and am licensed. And I can marry and bury and, and serve communion. Uh, yippee, you have earrings. Gorgeous. Saying hi from Ormond Beach, Florida. Thank you. Glad you guys are here. And so we're sharing this spiritual moment. Um, Peggy says they don't match the shirt. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Um, go outside and see the moon. I heard it's going to be quite quite a moon tonight. So absolutely, let me know where you're joining from. Why the earrings? Because they're cool and I like them. My question, I guess, would be why not the earrings? Oh, somebody muted. I must have... Is Jamie here with me? Jamie, are you here moderating? Shanna is here from Houston. Very cool. Nope, not self-appointed. I have I have a board and uh, people who review. So, but hey, you get to feel superior, or should I say, you get to feel white supremacist, however you prefer. Thanks, Shanna. We're modding for. Oh, thank you, Chuck. 
I'm here. There was an insult thrown. Yeah, we're going to get that from Christians because they don't know any other language than insults, do they? Carol's here from Colorado. Thank you guys for joining. Okay, and so I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. Uh, Jacob says, thank you for responding. I was united Pentecostal apostolic. Okay. Another Houston being repped with Angie tonight. Thanks for the follow. So I got to show you guys something because we are sort of going into this space of breaking down gender norms and normatives of the evangelical Christian church. Hi, Teresa from Texas. Good to see you. I hear it's really hot where you guys are. So these came in the mail today. My new boots. I call them my Prince boots. Woohoo. Get down. It's going to be crazy. So I, I really dig these. So yeah. And you know what? It's going to drive Christians insane. Insane. <laughs> Which I really like. Um, because they don't realize that earrings were worn by men for centuries, 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 centuries. And it was just the West that decided, yeah, I need a little red Corvette, don't I? It was just Western Christianity that decided Puritanism and putting shame on people was what Jesus really came to do. Your, your shame-based religion is crazy, crazy. And all I want to do is set people free from the shame and bondage of religion, which is exactly what Jesus came to do. And religious people hated him passionately for it then. And religious people today hate you passionately if you try to set people free from the bondage of their religion. So I wanted to ask a question because I have Sunday night, a deconstruction you event. Uh, we call it unconventional conversations. Wearing earrings is blasphemy. Isn't that funny? Like, man, how far gone do you have to be? Hi, Hannah from Ontario. Doxy says, I really want your earrings. Well, send in. So um, it's not religion. It's his will. No, no, it's religion. You, you have a set of rules. And if somebody doesn't follow those rules, you condemn them as not being as good as you. That is the textbook definition of religion. Christians all the time say, oh, it's all about grace. It's all about grace. Oh, okay, good. Well, then you can be gay and go to heaven. No, no, you can't. You have a sin code. You have a rule book. And you're either in or you're out. That is the textbook definition of religion. You are religious people. And Jesus despised religious people. Jesus openly, sarcastically, and harshly, and publicly mocked you. He mocked religious people. And I do too. Because I'm a follower of Christ, not a follower of Republican, uh, 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 evangelicalism. I get the two, they're so much the same. Republican, evangelical, Trump, evangelical, seditionist, evangelical, insurrectionist, even. I mean, there is there any difference between the two? Um, so... <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. So anyway. Oh, you're doing the very same thing. Yeah, I'm doing the very same thing as Jesus. I'm standing up against people who want to put religious bondage onto others. So yes, thank you. Uh, I know the book of Timothy and... Uh, the book of Timothy was not written by Paul. It was written many years later and uh, and is a book created to create a religion. Um, not grace of Christ, but a religion. So, yeah. All right. So let's talk about it. What was your deconstructing moment? What was the moment that you realized that the Christian community narrative that you were in bondage to wasn't exactly true. When is it that you realized what you believed was unbelievable to keep believing? I want to know when that moment came. And for me, uh, a lot of that came um, because I grew up in a very, very bondage-filled religious household. 
Um, we, we were brutally abused by our evangelical pastor father, who then would go into church and tell people how they needed to be pure and chaste and not smoke and not drink and not chew and not go to movies and not go to pool halls, not have long hair. You know, it's all grace, but you can't listen to rock music. It's all grace, but you can't watch Teletubbies on TV or whatever the, the thing on TV was. Um, it's all grace, but you can't be a Democrat. You know, all of those things, which are just such nonsense and, and nothing in the Bible supports any of those stances. And so I started deconstructing into grace, like, wow, the Jesus of the Bible looks nothing like the, the religion of my church. And so I began to deconstruct around that, even as a young child of like, wow, I wish you know, these sinners out there really look like they love people. I wish we were allowed to love people, but I understand that God doesn't allow me to love people. And those sinners out there seem to have joy. And the Bible says we're supposed to have joy. And we don't have joy. But someday we'll get to heaven We'll get taken out of here by the rapture, and then we'll get to say, Neener, 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 you guys are in hell, ha, 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 in your face, get get 666 on your forehead. So I knew, like, we are terrible, unhappy, condemning, joyless people, even though the Bible says we're supposed to have life to the full, and nothing of what we believe really lines up with the Bible, but I knew that's who we were supposed to be. And then I realized, like, when I actually read the Bible, it didn't, the Jesus of the Bible didn't look anything like the adults in my church and didn't look anything like our belief system. And so I moved into a more gracious space and that really changed my life in many, many ways. But then when I moved into that gracious space, um, I started looking at the Bible and, and then particularly so, so when I was moving into that gracious space, I started realizing, I literally had this experience one day. I was driving in my car and I realized like, I'm really angry right now. I'm, I'm really angry. What am I angry about? I was like asking myself in the car, why am I so angry right now? And I was struggling to figure out why am I angry? And then I realized why it was, why I was angry. Because I had listened to a couple of hours of Rush Limbaugh that morning, and Rush Limbaugh had made me angry at people. Like, that's what Rush Limbaugh did, is he would demonize people and, and get you to emotionally respond out of hatred to those people, and mostly out of fear for yourself. I mean, it's what right what right wing media does. It's it's the it's the magic elixir. It's the formula. We're going to make you afraid that those people are coming to get you. That one world government is coming to get you. Those demonic baby eaters are coming to get you. Those gay people are coming to get your children. Um, when the abusers and the groomers, we now know without question, are the preponderance are in our churches. Um, but we're still going to tell you that that those people are coming to get you. And so I realized in my car, like, I am angry. And I'm angry because I listened to Rush Limbaugh, who created a scenario for me to be angry and did that every day. And I said, wow, this is really having an impact on my heart. I'm pursuing Jesus and an abundant life. I don't like being angry like this. I wonder if I didn't listen to Rush Limbaugh, what would happen? And so I stopped listening to Rush. I told myself, I'm not going to listen to Rush Limbaugh for a week. And I couldn't believe the impact it had on my heart. I could not believe how much impact listening to Rush Limbaugh was having on my ability to love God and love my neighbor as myself. It was literally taking away to love God love my neighbor, and love myself. And I said, this is the antithesis of the Bible. And so I stopped listening to right-wing media. And everybody's, well, you just went to CNN and got... No, I've always been somebody who read from all sources. And I'm very careful to read, particularly from sources that are, that are moderate and centrist. So 
when I begin to realize, wow, not listening to Rush Limbaugh, hi, Dana from Orange County on you on uh, Facebook. When I begin to realize the impact that listening to Rush Limbaugh had on my heart, I began to say, wow, I wonder how much of right wing Republicanism as a whole is damaging my heart. And I, I came from a, house, a household where Ronald Reagan and God were neck and neck as the greatest beings of the universe, which my dad pretty much believing Ronald Reagan was pulling ahead, that that God had some things to learn from Ronnie. Um, God was maybe a little too loving. Ronnie was, you know, Ronnie was wholesome and up there. And so I begin to think maybe this right-wing Christianity is having an impact on my soul as well. And so I begin to deconstruct my political beliefs in the church. Well, then let, let me just wrap this up. I know it's a long story. Barack Obama got elected. And then I just saw the pure abject hatred from Christians of a black president and the things that were said. I, I don't think right-wingers even remember the horrible things they said about Barack Obama. He'll be divorced the day after he leaves office and he's gonna bring Sharia law in and he's gonna overturn the 2016 election and stay in office. And you got it all fucking wrong. You missed all of it and can't admit that you did. And I believe some of those things too. So I begin to think, well, I loved us because we were good, even though I had some problems with the fact that we couldn't be joyful or love people. But now I'm realizing we're not good. So what does that mean? So just about that time, I was stepping into what I believed was the call of my life to be a pastor of a church that meets in a building. And so I started my seminary training. And that's when I learned, holy shit. The Bible didn't just float down from heaven in this leather binding. It was a messy process of men arguing and voting and retranslating and putting it together. I, I, I always thought it's inerrant. God sent it down to us. That's what it is. And that's because nobody ever told me. Thanks, Greta, for that kind message. Nobody ever told me there were huge arguments about which books should or should not be in the Pro Protestant canon. Nobody ever told me that the Septuagint, the Bible that Jesus had, had books in it that Protestant Christians in America do not believe are inspired books. Jesus read, according to Protestants in America, an, a, a non-Holy Spirit-inspired Bible. And I begin to say, wow. That is a problem with our belief system. And then I was told, do you, you know, the rapture is not in the Bible. And in fact, the rapture was never believed by Christians prior to just after the Civil War. And I was like, what? I thought everybody believed in the rapture, particularly the pre-trib Assemblies of God American rapture. We want the rapture because that's what's going to take us out of our hatred and pain and joyless life into being able to say, there in your face, sinners. And then when that was taken away, it was just a string and a sweater that I started to pull. And the evangelical belief system unravels so fast when you start pulling on those strings. It's a very dissonant belief system. You have to do gymnastics beyond belief to hold those evangelical beliefs. So that's that's my story. And that's why now I'm really trying to give people permission to start to think and tell them that God does want you to think. God wants you to wrestle with your belief systems. You should always, always be challenging what you believe. You should be challenging me with what I tell you to believe instead of just being a condemning, angry, hateful Christian, as many people are on here. You should always be challenging beliefs. Because the Bible says if you don't, you're going to be conformed to your age and you're not going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you will not know what God is doing in the season. And that's what we see happening in evangelicalism today. So what you didn't know that about the rapture? No, no Christian, zero Christians ever believed in a rapture until the late 19th century. The rapture is about a 150-year-old 
sinner's prayer. The sinner's prayer is a is one of the newest theological constructs out there. Certainly Jesus never led anyone in a sinner's prayer. Neither did Paul or Peter or James or John. The sinner's prayer was invented in the late 19th, early 20th century. It's there, it's just under 150 years old. So there are these theologies that we're taught are solid gold that have been made up by men in the last century or so that weren't even believed by the earliest Christians. And so that's when my belief system started to deconstruct. It started to unravel. And I began to rethink, well, who is God? What is the Bible? What is sin? And through doing that, I've been able to find the best relationship with the spirit of heaven, to find the best relationship with other human beings, and to find the best relationship with myself that I've ever been able to have. Jesus' command was love God, love your neighbor as yourself, which requires a loving of self to do it. Religion and particularly evangelical Christianity teaches us to despise ourselves, to hate everything about ourselves. And it and it creates a situation where if I can't love myself and I am worshiping this angry, horrible God, thin-skinned, easily offendable, then I'm going to be terrible to you as well because I want you to be under the oppressive bondage of my angry, horrible, thin-skinned God as well. So... Let me know, what was your deconstructing moment? And as you're thinking about it and starting to type it into the comments, um, let me remind you, Sunday night, five o'clock Pacific, we're having an, what's called an unconventional conversation. Am I still a Christian? And will God be mad if I ask questions about my faith? It will be a live stream that we'll do here. But if you join the Pastor Paul community on my website, pastor-paul.com, at the lowest level, the $5.99 level, you will be invited into the Zoom room discussion with me. We will be able to talk to each other in there. Um, so go to the website, pastor-paul.com, and for just $5.99, a subscription in there, you get to be a part of the unconventional conversation in the Zoom room this coming Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Pastor-paul.com, you can get a free 15-minute meeting with me. You can find out about the other services I do, but just click on that, join the unconventional conversation with unconventional Pastor Paul and you can sign up to be a part of our discussion on Sunday night. So, excellent. Interesting earrings for a pastor. Why is that? Josie Wells. Imper Duex says, just like regular church pay to play. Yes, I provide a service and I charge for it. Correct. Yep. I guess, are you a socialist? Are you against people getting paid for working? Asking $5.99 for a lifetime of experience and information they're sharing? You're, you must be a socialist. I thought angry Christians were all like, gosh darn capitalist. Woohoo. Kat says, I felt like I was not worth anything. So after I stopped going to church, I started reading the word. That's a that's a dangerous thing um, when we start reading the Bible. When you start reading the Bible and you realize that Jesus doesn't look like Western Christianity, it's a very dangerous thing. That's actually not true. Emperor says Jesus didn't charge. You actually are wrong in that. Um, Jesus actually had two very wealthy women. We know from historical uh, and biblical uh, text that he had two very wealthy women that funded what he did. And everywhere he went, every town he went to, the people in the town would put him and a very large entourage up in their homes. They would feed him. And then as he left town, they would give him money to be on his way. So you're absolutely wrong that Jesus didn't charge for what he did. He was well-funded. And how do we know he was well-funded? Because Judas was stealing from the money purse, we're told. And here's the thing. If there are two coins in a money purse and somebody steals one of them, you're going to notice there's a coin missing from the money purse, isn't there? But if there's 
200 coins in the money purse and somebody steals one of them, you're not going to uh, notice that it's gone. So, so no, there's nothing in the Bible that commands pastors or ministry folks to do what they do as destitute, um, non, non eater, homeless people. When Jesus said, I, you know, the sparrows have, have a nest. I don't have a place to lay my head. Um, what he was saying is I've left my lineage behind. I, I can't go home because I've left my family line behind. So it's important that when you make statements like that, you actually know the Bible. Peggy, my friend on YouTube says, hey guys, give the $5.99 to a good cause. What else can you get for $5.99 these days? Thank you, Peggy. That's very sweet. Greta says, my deconstruction and reconstruction happened in college when I realized I had to find out why I believed in Jesus other than because my parents told me to. Everything fell apart fast when I read the actual Bible for myself and felt like I was reading a completely different book than what I had been taught. Um, they made small things a big deal and big things unimportant and almost hidden. Wow, Greta, that's beautiful. That is exactly what happens. Let me tell you, let me tell you, Christians. Thank you, by the way, Karen, on TikTok for the roses. If you start reading the Bible, it's a very, very dangerous thing. It's why most Christians don't do it. And when they do, they only read the passages that support their community narrative. Johnny Five says, funny how one book spurred so many twisted ideologies. It's very true because men like to divide over silly, silly things. Sorry Reloading says, I was always yelled at by my pastor parents for not believing the way they did and saying I didn't. Yeah, mine too. My pastor parents were not only abusive of their children, but then very holy on Sunday and taught this very oppressive, angry, shame-filled religion. So my pronouns are they, them. Thank you for asking. No shit, Sherlock says, I wish you could talk to my pro-Trump evangelical, evangelical parents. Send them my videos and I'll be glad. Tell them to send me a message. I'll be glad to talk to them. Ashley M says, that really resonates with me. Thank you for the roses. What is that? Nana MTZ. Cheesy says, hello, beautiful. Thank you. Very kind of you. Corey Johnson says, thanks. Liber Lotus says, for me, Gnostic Christ or nothing. Ex experiential, experientialism. Is that the word? Over faith. Did I pronounce that correctly? I, I don't know exactly. I have an idea of what that word means, but I'm sorry. I don't know it right off the bat. Uh, Ferniad. So I'm, I'm asking people to share their deconstruction story. What got you starting uh, to uh, deconstruct? Josie Wells. No, I have. I do not pastor a brick and mortar church and will never do that again. But I planted, I was in church leadership for 25 years and I planted and was senior pastor of a church for 10. How could you pastor without reading the Bible? Oh, I, I read the Bible a lot when I was a pastor. I was I was deconstructing as a pastor. They, them, pastor with earrings. What's wrong with this picture? I don't know. I don't know, Holly. What is wrong with this picture? King David wore earrings. And he danced a dance where he was naked and so, so embarrassed his wife, she didn't want to live in the castle with the king anymore. I don't know. Do you guys ever read the Bible? Like, do Christians actually know there is a book to read that's the Bible? You like you don't just hear a pastor give you a verse on Sunday on the big screen and then go Google that verse when you like, do you know like you could actually read the Bible itself? I, I think Christians actually never read the Bible. Isn't that funny? Why are you wearing my mom's earrings? Because I like your mom's earrings. I was a teaching assistant. Oh, uh, this this uh, Facebook guest says I've deconstructed as a ministry leader. Vicky on Facebook says I was a teaching assistant for an intro to mythology class in college. It was fun to see the freshmen have their minds blown when they learned there is a flood story, Gil Gilgamesh, that is way older than the story of Noah's Ark. Yeah, that happened to me and then definitely to my daughter. Of There is a Noah's Ark story in every single religion. And I don't know how to tell you guys this. 
but it is fucking bullshit to believe that uh, an ancient farmer could build a boat that was large enough to house two of every animal and enough food to feed them for 40 days. And I don't care what any stupid shit museum in Tennessee says. Viva Veva says, I love the earrings. Thank you, Viva. Justin on Facebook says, when I found my mom dead in her bed nine days before my 30th birthday, faith wavered. Then years later, while taking care of my father 24-7, my evangelical brother and his wife were spending his money behind my back as I struggled to care for him. I had no choice to put him, but, but to put him in a VA home. Yeah, Christians are often by far the worst representation of Jesus. Trashy Trash says your earrings are fire. Thank you, Trashy Trash. So is the story a metaphor just false or what? I would say Noah's Ark is a is a legend. It is it is perhaps a metaphorical story, but it's it's just a mythological legend that ended up in the book. So a bunch of people with no communication randomly made up the same story. Maybe. Maybe, or maybe human beings are spiritually tied together and, and we're able to share information with each other through quantum physics. T-God says, puppet of Lucifer. Oh, I've been called way worse than that. And you know who else was called that, by the way? Tug T.A. God's. Jesus was called that exact thing. So thank you. Thank you for the compliment. The only spiritual power is witchcraft. Love the earrings. Thank you, Justin. Sorry to eat in front of the microphone. I'm just a little hungry. Greta says, I feel like translations are made to hide the weird stuff in the Bible. Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing we know is... We read in the Bible about Joseph and the coat of many colors. Oh, you've got a, a necklace to match my earrings? Cool. Send it to me. Go to my website and let me know. Uh, and let's hook up and you can send it. Wow, Paul, you get a tough audience. Yes, I do, Devin. Christians are angry, spiteful, hateful people when you challenge their religion, just as religious people were of Jesus in the first century. So you're, you're seeing what people who are enslavers and want to put people in the bondage of their religion do when somebody comes along who's one of them and says, I think you're wrong. So Oakdale Curtis says, Yahweh accepted the Old Testament as God's word. So he never said that uh, necessarily. He did quote uh, he did talk about Noah and he talked about Jonah and he was a first century person that didn't know that America existed or the Western hemisphere or that the earth was round. Um, and so he may not have known that Noah was allegorical and didn't happen or some version of an understanding of some cataclysmic event that happened on earth. Corey asked, uh, would you say you're still a Christian? And that's the topic of of our Zoom meeting on Sunday. Am I still a Christian? Is, is God going to be mad if I question my faith? And if you want to join me for that event, go to my website, pastor-paul.com and check it out. Am I still a Christian? Um, the thing is, I'm not one of those Christians. So as Christian, the word, what Christian has come to mean in America today, absolutely not. Jesus knew that there was a Western hemisphere and yet never told anybody that? He kept that a secret? Jeez, come on. Come on. Come on. He knew there was a he knew there there could be wheels and cars. He knew how to how to solve diseases and instead he just went around and touched a few people and come on. I mean, sometimes we're not even logical, Christian. Sometimes like we're not even thoughtful logically. And, and it's why you get laughed at by other people in culture, because you have to do such calisthenics 
to keep defending your religious beliefs. It's, it's amazing. Um, Peggy says, are you telling me that the giants didn't help Noah build an ark? I'm crushed. Vicky says, I can't wait for Sunday's talk. I will subscribe as soon as the live is over. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah, for just $5.99 subscription, you can even go in and subscribe and join us in the Zoom room meeting on Sunday and then cancel your subscription or you can stay in and continue to help. And that money goes towards helping me continue to do my work and give lots of free content out. Um, I, I have to eat. And speaking of having to eat, I'm going to take a, take a bite here real quick. So you are a Christian. I am a follower of Jesus, yes, but I am not a Christian uh, by what Christian has come to mean. But I do count myself as an evangelical because I want to continue to be able to say, hey, guys, we're being really idiotic. I want evangelicals to know I'm one of you and I've weighed our belief system in the balance and I've seen that it doesn't add up. Why Jesus? That's a great question. Who asked that? Fabulous for real. Ooh, I love your moniker. I think the story of Jesus taken as a whole is one of the most radical, countercultural, awesome stories there is. Jesus was such a, a, a poker in the eye to the status quo. He just said, F you guys. He, he Jesus would be wearing earrings if he was on earth today and saying, fuck your gender norms. And that's why I love the story of Jesus. He was a radical. He was a countercultural overthrower of status quo. He sat with the people the status quo lovers hated. He sat with the people religious people hated. Those religious people who said, oh, them, they don't deserve God's favor. Jesus would say, I'm going to go have lunch with that tax collector. Jesus would say, I'm going to, I'm going to stand in front of the woman caught in adultery and say, you guys are the problem, not her. And that's why I love the story of Jesus. Now what Christians, and let me, Christians have done with the story is such a bastardization as to be awful. But the story of Jesus is amazing. Oh, so I, 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 lost, I interrupted myself. So Joseph, we're told that Joseph wore a coat of many colors. But the word that has been translated by Puritan writers who were afraid of anything messy is Joseph wore a coat of many colors. But the actual word, we only have that word or that terminology in the Bible one other time. And it was about Tamar, a daughter of King David. And it said Tamar wore a princess outfit or she wore uh, an outfit that a princess would wear. Joseph was hated by his brothers, I believe, because he was wearing women's clothing. We already know that having clothing with a lot of coloring in it was what women did, not men in that day. And, and But Joseph didn't work in the field with his brothers. He was in the house and he wore a princess outfit. And somewhere along the line, some translator was like, oh, we can't have Joseph wearing princess clothing. So let's change it. What a coat of many colors. But even then, Christians don't realize a coat of many colors was feminine clothing. It was a feminine clothing. And Joseph was hated for being too pretty by his brothers. And by the way, his dad, Jacob, his dad, Jacob, was looked down upon by his own father because he wasn't hairy. He worked in the kitchen with his mother. He wasn't a hunter. He wasn't a man's man. Isn't it amazing that again and again we see G we see God picking Joseph, the boy who dressed too pretty, Jacob, the smooth, 
uh, effeminate boy who worked in the kitchen with his mom rather than out in the field, that he that he chose Jesus, who wasn't trying to overthrow the government, but instead say, I'm going to I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you into the kingdom. We see David loving his friend Jonathan as as a as a man loves a woman. We see David dancing naked in a way that was so offensive to his wife that she said, "I am moving out of the castle and will not live with you anymore." We see Jesus having a friend John who was laying against his breast at the last supper. Come on, Christians, read your Bible. God is always picking the marginalized, always picking the unlikely. David, when when Samuel told Jesse, bring all your sons and I'm going to anoint one of them as king, Jesse didn't even invite David to the room. David was such an unlikely hero and an unlikely king. His own father didn't even invite him to the dress rehearsal. And I think in part because I think David was a bastard. That, that's, that's why he said, in sin was I conceived. But God always is choosing the unlikely. Jesus was called demon-possessed. He was called a lover of sinners. He was called a drunkard and a sinner. And hang on, do you guys not read the Bible? Jesus said, hey, those eunuchs, those effeminate men you make fun of, do you know some of them were, were made that way by God? Read the Bible and don't read it as if it were a book written by Americans in English for Americans. It's not that kind of a book. You will read it wrong if you do that. God, I'm so tired. You, you have become an existential threat to our culture and to people. There are people living under the shame of the bondage of your religion who are literally killing themselves. And you don't give a shit because you don't know the Bible. You don't know God. You don't know the nature of God represented through the life and story of Jesus. And so you're these condemning, angry, hateful people, driving people from the gospel and driving some of them literally to early graves because you are so freaking self-righteous. Tuzi says, have you read The Pagan Christ by Tom Harper? It's by an Anglican peace, priest, professor, journalist. It's about how the basic teachings of Christ are lost on today's church. No, I haven't. That, that sounds really interesting. Greta says, LMAO, have you guys not read the Bible is what I say in my head on repeat whenever I try to go to regular American churches. It's very true. A Facebook guest says, yes, people living under the bondage of religion. Yes, American Christianity is a bondage religion. You must conform to our community belief. You must be a white Euro cultural person. Now, you can be of a different race, but you have to adopt our culture to be a part of us and to be loved by God. We'll, we'll talk about traditional family when the Bible says nothing about traditional family and Jesus would never have known such a family ever. He would have not known a single person that lives in the American traditional family, but he would probably be aware today that James Dobson, who started focus on the family and pushed this idea of traditional family was in fact a eugenics guy. He came out of an organization that believed in eugenics. What are eugenics? Eugenics are, the idea that uh, people wanted to say, we need to have more white babies, like white people are not having enough babies. It's, it's even written in the Supreme Court's decision on Roe v. Wade, we need a greater inventory of babies. And uh, eugenics is all about, um, we need white people to have more children because those people are having children and growing their lineage at a rate that white people and Euro culture is not keeping up with. And that's who James Dobson is. That's who Focus on the Family is. And all of the political action groups that Focus on the Family has birthed. Um, it's evil. It truly is evil. It is the opposite of who Jesus was. By the way, 
crazy thing for Christians. Imagine this. You Christians may not be aware of this because it's it's a very obscure fact. So listen, I'm going to tell you something that's really obscure that you probably haven't heard before. Jesus was not American. I'm, I'm serious. I, you may have to do some research to find this out. He was not American. And I, I, I'm really going to blow your mind now. He wasn't white. He wasn't from Europe. I'm, I'm sorry to do that to you, Christians. Um, and, and I hate to just keep kicking you in the balls, but he didn't speak English. Um, somebody just said something about color babies being born. And I like how Christians always say, well, we, we knew, we knew that he's not American and white but you sure don't act like you do. Project Queen says, I will be subscribing. Go ahead, Pastor. Woo, love you. Did Jesus wear earrings? I don't know if he wore earrings, but I know that he did stuff that made religious people really angry. And they called him a sinner and they called him demon possessed and they called him a false teacher and all of the things you see angry, condemning Christians calling me on here, which I take as a major compliment. I consider it a privilege to be put down just as G by religious people, just as Jesus was put down by religious people. Do you have a podcast? Yes, I do. Mallory, thanks for asking. It's called, well, I have two of them actually. One is called Post Evangelical Podcast. And that's the one I do personally. I just had one last week. I talked to a witch. Tomorrow, I'm going to have one where, where I talk to a trans female pastor. And I have another podcast called Evangelicalish that I just did earlier tonight. You can find both of those on YouTube or on my website, pastor-paul.com. Yeah, somebody said... Color babies. Oh my gosh. Christians. Wow. Maybe it's the earrings, but you've moved me to tears. Thanks. I'm subscribing, sir. Thank you, TG Gatsby. Love you. Ah, breaks my heart. Well, moves my heart to, to tears. Did I show you guys these? These are my new boots. <laughs> Sorry. I can't get them on both pictures at the same time. Aren't they awesome? Thank you, T.G. Gatsby. Pastor-Paul.com is the website. And I got to tell you guys, I hate asking for money. There's no question about it. Um, but I have to live. And like I said, Jesus was funded by women who helped fund him and also by people giving him gifts and taking him in and money as he left town. Kat says, I love those boots. Sadly, I can't walk in heels anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just learning to walk in heels, which I love. Uh, we have a question. Do you believe Romans 10, 9? So first off, for the book of Romans particularly, you have to be very careful about taking one verse and, and calling it anything. Like Romans is a book that has to be taken as a whole together. So let's see what Romans 10, 9 says, and we'll see what, what we think about it. I'm sorry, I don't have the whole book memorized. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So let me ask you a question. What does the word saved mean to you? And what does the word righteousness mean to you? And what does it mean to you in Romans 3, 4, 5 that it says, if there's anything you can do to earn your righteousness, then your righteousness is not from God because you can boast about it. Let me ask you that. So if you think Romans 10, 9 is leading us to a sinner's prayer, uh, Gypsy says it's literally $5.99 a month while your church demands 10% of your earnings. Yeah. Yes, I just asked for money like Jesus did. Jesus was funded 
with money. Yes, he was. Tuzi says, when I start working, I will subscribe for sure. Thank you, Tuzi, for bringing this up. Mm, sorry, I'm eating food and I should not be eating food, but I'm so hungry. If you can't afford, get off that thread. Sorry, my dog is bothering me here. If you can't afford to give even $5.99 a month, do not give. And if you say, if you send me a message through the website and say, I want to join the Zoom event Sunday night, Pastor Paul, but I cannot afford even the $5.99 a month, send me a message and we will work it out because I know many of you are struggling big time. So don't let money be an impediment. If you can give the $5.99, that'd be great. If it puts you in a financial bind, send me a message and let's talk it through. Hi, Molly. Molly, my friend. Oh, I've missed you. She says, I love the earrings. Scree says, you're a pastor? Peggy on Facebook says, scares the shit out of them that the U.S. won't be predominantly white. Uh-oh, you're rubbing off on me, she says. Uh, Josie says, God will forgive us if we accept him as our savior and forgive us of our sins. So in other words, you're saying Adam's act of eating fruit um, causes everybody to be sinners. There's nothing we can do about it. I guess as we're conceived in the womb, we're sinners. So if you if you die as a miscarriage, you go to hell because you're a sinner at conception. Um, but to go to heaven, Jesus act is not powerful enough to get me there. I have to say a sinner's prayer to get there. It's a it's a bad belief system. It is a an heretical belief system. Jamie says, I have to tell you, as an ex-evangelical, I get so much out of your content. Love your content. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, don't forget, guys, Sunday night, 5 o'clock Pacific, uh, our unconventional conversation with unconventional Pastor Paul. Am I a Christian? Will God be mad at me for asking questions about my faith? You can watch it live streamed, or you can join me in the Zoom room for the discussion. And all you have to do is go to the website, pastor-paul.com subscribe at the $5.99 level and you're in. And as I was saying, if the, even that $5.99 um, is a problem, send me a message and we'll work it through. Babies lie as soon as they can talk. And that I believe is because parents put shame on their babies. My kids don't lie to me because I've, I don't put shame on them. Kids lie when they have a sense of an unjust world. Sorry, I'm taking my earrings off. They hurt. They're hurting my ears. All right, guys, I have just a little bit of time left and then I'm going to have to go. So let's get those last questions in. <laughs> what is a woman? Boy, right-wing media has control of our churches, don't they? We are all sinners, but Jesus died for our sins. So, again, you believe that Adam's act is really powerful and impacts every human being, but Jesus' act can only affect those who agree with it. That is a very poor theology and is not what the Bible says. Marcian says, love that. Kids lie because they don't feel safe. Absolutely. Absolutely. If we quit putting shame on children, they would quit lying to us. Sips his tea too. Do you believe in a talking snake? I do not. 
That is an allegorical story written by ancient Bedouin farmers. We were taught that children who die before accepting Christ are protected by grace. That's exactly right. That's the point I'm trying to make. Deb Deborah Ann says, thank you for your videos. I love them. Thank you, Deborah Ann. Um, Christians can find loopholes wherever they need to find loopholes, and then they refuse to have loopholes where they want to be self-righteous and curse others. There's nothing in the Bible at all that says a baby that dies in childbirth goes to heaven. But ask any Christian if that baby goes to hell because of Adam's sin, they'll say, no, that wouldn't be fair because Christians can make loopholes when they need and want to make loopholes. They believe in a personally convenient theology. Yes, you are correct. No, no, no. You believe in a cherry-picked American man-made religion following a white evangelical Jesus. McD Sean says, just subscribe. Thank you guys. So yes, be paying, be listening. Um, Sunday night, five o'clock, unconventional conversations with uh, unconventional pastor Paul. Are you growing your hair long to go with your earrings? I'm, I'm just growing my hair long because I want to, but yeah. Um, and that's Sunday night at five o'clock and you can join us in the discussion by subscribing on my website, pastor-paul.com uh, at five, as a, at little as $5 and 99 cents a month. You can subscribe at a higher level and get some other cool stuff. By the way, at that $5 and 99 cent level, you also get access to the audiobook version of my novel. Joseph comes to town. I know it's backwards on TikTok. This is my novel. Uh, this is my story of what would Jesus say to the American evangelical church if he were incarnate in America today, Joseph comes to town and at that $5.99 level for free, you get the audiobook version that you can only get on my website. So again, $5.99 a month uh, for that subscription. You can go higher at, I think at $15.99, you get a free autographed copy of my book. And if you go up to $100 a month, you get a free one-on-one -on -one every month. So if any of this is like, I, I don't know what I do, and, and Paul has these deconstruction you classes and these reconstruction you emotional well-being coaching, and, and you're like, I think I need some help, but I don't know what it is. There, You can sign up for a free 15-minute consult with me, and we can just hang out together and figure it out. So thanks, Gypsy Nurse Leslie, for subscribing. Thank you, Nurse Leslie. Legal Blonde says, check out Dan McClellan. Dan is going to join us on Evangelicalish in a few weeks. I can't wait. Beard Stash says, hi, Pastor Paul. Love your content. Keep it up. Oh, I want to do something. Just for fun. You guys are so kind to me, and you bring tears to my eyes. The trauma I had because of my church caused me significant and lifelong issues. What do you guys think of these? I can't figure out if I like these or not. I love Dan. He's very informative. Jamie, the trauma that young Christian evangelical kids feel is real. It is a real malady and is something that I want to stand against and help kids be out of. You like the color? Red's not your color. Oh, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. I think you're right. I don't think red is my color. Purple is better. Let me show you the ones that I really like. Love those earrings too. I'll show you my faves. Basic says, I think you should wear what you love. It's kind of clashing with your skin. Yeah, I mean, I want to know what looks good, though. I agree, though. You look swell with bright colored earrings, says Greta. Thank you. These are my favorites. Do you normally wear earrings? I'm kind of starting to.
Jamie says, my parents didn't get me therapy when they knew I was self-harming because they said I needed to talk to pastor instead. Wow. Chuck says, got to run, pastor. Be blessed. Love you, Chuck. Thanks for hanging out with me. Dana says, we have to stop Christian nationalists. They are a cancer on our democracy. Yes. Michelle England says, I do like the pink. Thank you, Michelle. What do you think of the gold? Uh, Greta says, you look swell with bright colored earrings better than metal tones. Oh, really? You like them better than the metal tones? P says, yes, queen, love the hoops. Love the gold. Reason says, I knew I was trans at 11. Oh, I love those, said Gypsy. Thank you, guys. They look great with the purple shirt. I think they do. I feel like blue would look great on you too. Let me, I wonder if I have any blue. Let's see. Let's see. Let's try it. Sunday night, guys. Don't miss it. Unconventional conversations with unconventional Pastor Paul. Greta says, I think it's because the metal ones are harder to see on video. Now, that makes sense. All right, let's try blue. I really don't have a deep, dark blue. Oh, wait. Here, we'll try. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. This is funny. You'd look great in drag. I'm getting a lady bunny vibe. <laughs> okay, what do we think of? This is light blue. I think gold and purple is royalty, says Kenneth. With hoops, you need some long nails too. That's true, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how we got into this, but I just saw your ring. Are you married? Yes, I am married. Cecilia says, I will be subscribing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It, it really will help me continue to do my, my free content. I really wasn't doing the subscriptions hard because I was able to do a lot of coaching. And so I was making my living doing coaching. But that has kind of dropped off with the economy. So now I really am asking people to jump on that $5.99 if you can. And if it will put you in any sort of financial bind, do not do it. Let me know. We'll, we'll work something else out. Um, what exactly is your content? I talk about cultural, religious, and political content or, or issues from a uh, Protestant, evangelical, biblical perspective. Gypsy says tassels and rainbows. Yes. Oh, they do have the rainbow, don't they? I didn't even notice that. Those look great, say Mallory Jean. Thank you, guys. Okay, now let's try a darker blue. This is kind of fun, huh? Some of these I've never worn before. What is your training? I was trained ally. I was trained in the Vineyard Association of Churches. I went to their seminary training called the Vineyard Leadership Institute. Cecilia says, I am at work, so I didn't get the pastor-paul.com. Did I get that right? It's pastor-paul.com. In fact, I'll, I'll type it in. Let me type it in for you so you can get it. Let me know what, the, what this color blue looks like for you guys. Pastor-paul.com. Ears pierced are they clip? They're clip-ons, but I think I'm going to get them pierced. P A S T O R dash P A U L dot com. Because the clips do start do start hurting after a while. The vineyard, it was the Vineyard Leadership Institute when I was in it. All right, so what do we think of these? Love them, says Marcy Ann. Boy, they really stand out, don't they? I don't know that I don't, they're too long though. These kind of bug me. There is a verse that says when one is saved in a household, everyone will be saved. That is what I cling to. Blue is definitely a great color for you. Cool. Thank you. I just, I just think he needs mascara. Yeah, I would like some. I think that would be cool. The vineyard came out of Campus Crusade for Christ. Not really. The vineyard actually came out of um, Calvary Chapel. 
Um, my understanding, I could be wrong. Go to a tattoo and piercing place and not anywhere that does it with an earring gun. They, they never heal properly and are not so clean. Ooh, thanks, Greta, for that input. Are you part of the clergy project? I'm not. Pierce says, Peggy, yeah, I need to. Because these do start hurting my ears after a while. What does your spouse do? She was an elected official for eight years, mayor of our city of Fresno, and now she is um, head of a not-for-profit that is looking to increase economic opportunity for disadvantaged communities. Correct. God is not mad at you. There is no God sitting on a throne sending lightning judgments down at you. Thanks for the likes, Jamie. Yeah, I don't like these. I don't like those. Yick. Yick, yick, yick. So let's just say no to those. Although I do, you're right on blue. I do, I do think. Daniel Leclerc says, I almost want to do that. If you had gold rings at the top of your ears and the bottom of yours with chains connected. Ooh, that would be cool. Just another Jamie says facts about piercing. All right, what do you guys think of these? I want to get my ears designed. I got to look at this. So I never realized like you can do it with, you can do it with uh, a needle or do it with a gun. I didn't know that. I think I'm losing a lot of viewers since we started talking earrings. The this is a key that Dane is putting here. I, I do believe it's okay for me to sell services that I do to help people for money. The second I start telling you you're going to hell if you don't give me money, somebody stop me. Somebody, somebody knock me over. So uh, Gypsy says, if the link bothers you, you can always clip the tassel shorter. Really? I'll have to figure out how to, you just mean cut them? Definitely go to a tattoo and piercing shop. Much, much safer. That's interesting. Devin says, see you next time. All right, guys, I really better get going. I actually have to do some work before I go to bed tonight. Pastor-Paul.com and sign up to be a part of our unconventional conversation this coming Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Wait, I saw somebody... Ayla Alax says, I'm curious. What are you curious about? Bye, peace, love. Thank you. See you Sunday, says T.G. Gatsby. Cake J. Ron says, dang, just got here. Sorry, guys. Good night, Greta. Love you. Marcian says, that would be a lie. You are loved. Devin says, thanks, Paul. See you later. Peggy says, now that you're done eating, you're right. Gypsy says, yes, just regular scissors cut them. Okay, cool. Good. Well, guys, I love you hanging out with me. It's an honor to be able to share my heart with you all. So thanks so much. So YouTube and Facebook, let me say goodnight to 